Hi everyone, it's Professor Primpton, and in this video we're going to talk about laws of logarithms. The properties give logarithmic functions a wide range of applications, including exponential growth and decay. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use the product rule for logarithms, use the quotient rule for logarithms, use the power rule for logarithms, how to expand a logarithmic expression using the laws of logarithms, condense a logarithmic expression using the laws of logarithms, and then we're also going to talk about how to use the change of base formula to evaluate logarithms. So let's discuss the laws of logarithms. So since the logarithms are just exponents, there are properties involving exponents that actually give you rise to what's called the laws of logarithms. So the theorem says laws of logarithms, let a be a positive number where a is not equal to one, so that's the base of the logarithmic function. In addition, let capital A, capital B, and capital C be any real numbers where capital A and capital B must be positive numbers. So number one, the product rule, states that log base a of a times b. So notice that inside the argument of the logarithmic function, you have a product. You have a times b. Those two factors multiply together. Well, you can write this logarithm of a product into a sum of logarithms with the same base. In other words, you can write it as log base a of one factor as part of the logarithm's argument, plus logarithm base a of the other factor as the argument of the logarithm. So you have log base a of capital A, plus log base A of capital B, and that's called the product rule for logarithms. The logarithm of a product is the sum of the logarithm of the factors. Number two, the quotient rule. Logarithm base A of a fraction, A divided by B. Well, there's a logarithm rule that says that if you take a quotient as part of the argument, then you can rewrite this into a difference of logarithms with the same base. So you can rewrite this as log base A of capital A, so that's the argument that's in the numerator, subtract log base a of b, where b was in the denominator of the argument of the original logarithm. And so this means a logarithm of a quotient is the difference of the logarithms. And since you're talking about the difference, the order is important. It's the argument that was the numerator, so that's capital A. And then the other argument is b, which is the denominator, which is the logarithm after the subtraction sign. And then number three, the power rule says log base a of an exponential expression, where you have base a exponential expression raised to the c exponent, then you can rewrite the exponent out in front as a coefficient of your logarithm. So it's c times log base a of the base, which was capital A, that now makes up the argument of the logarithm. And so a logarithm of an exponential expression is the product of the exponent and the logarithm. So let's try out the laws of logarithms in example one. So example one, laws of logarithms, Use the laws of logarithms to evaluate each logarithmic expression without using a scientific or graphing calculator for the first two, and then we're going to use a graphing calculator or a scientific calculator for the last two. So number one, we're going to evaluate what is log base four of two plus log base four of 32. Well, notice you have a sum between the two different logarithms and the logarithms both have base four. So you can use the product law for logarithms to actually simplify this and to make it a single logarithm, base four. So log base four of, well, one argument was two, the other argument was 32, and you're adding the two logarithms together. That means you can form one logarithm with a product. So log base four of two times 32, or that would be log base four of 64. So in other words, what is four to what power, what exponent on base four will give you 64? It must be three because four cubed is 64. So log base four of 64 is equal to three. So that's the value of log base four of two, plus log base four of 32 is equal to three. Number two, let's try log base three of 324, then subtract log base three of four. Again, notice that you have two logarithms. They both have the same base, base three, and this time you actually are subtracting the two logarithms. So this is the quotient rule for logarithms that we're gonna use. You can rewrite this as a single logarithm, log base three, where 324 is the argument of the logarithm that's before the subtraction sign, so that makes up the numerator. So log base three of 324, and four was the argument in the logarithm after the subtraction sign, that's in the denominator. So log base three of 324 divided by four. Now you can simplify the fraction, 324 divided by four becomes 81. So now you're looking for what is log base three of 81? If the base is three, what is the exponent on base three that will give you 81, which is the argument? Well, it has to be four because three to the fourth power is equal to 81. So log base three of 81 is equal to four, which tells us that log base three of 324 subtract so log base three of four is equal to four. And notice that we didn't have to use a graphing or scientific calculator to actually evaluate the logarithms in problems one or two. However, in problems three and four, we will need to use a scientific or graphing calculator. So number three, we're going to evaluate what is two thirds times natural log of four. Well, this time, notice that there's a coefficient out in front of your logarithm. It's two thirds times the natural log of four. You can rewrite this using the power law for logarithms. 
Any coefficient in front of a logarithm can be rewritten so that you can have an exponential expression as part of the argument of the logarithm. So 2 thirds can be rewritten as an exponent on base 4. So you have natural log of base 4 to the 2 thirds exponent. And now you can evaluate what is 4 to the 2 thirds. Well, 4 to the 2 thirds would be 4 squared, that's 16, and it's the cube root of 16. So this is natural log of the cube root of 16. And if you use a scientific or graphing calculator, you'll find out it's approximately 0 0.924 if you round to three decimal places. In other words, this is the answer because if you take natural log that has a base e logarithm, so base e raised to the 0.924 exponent, you should get about the cube root of 16. And then number four, let's say you have negative one third is the coefficient times log. This is a common logarithm because that doesn't have a base indicated, so it's base 10. So negative one third times the common logarithm or log base 10 of 1 27th. So again, you have a coefficient out in front of the logarithm that can be rewritten as a power. So you have the power rule for logarithms can be used. So this can be rewritten as log base 10 or just log of 1 27th raised to the exponent negative 1 third. And so 1 27th raised to the negative 1 third is really 27 to the positive 1 third power. And so you have log base 10 of 27 to the 1 third power. Well, 27 to the 1 third, that's the cube root of 27. And so it becomes log base 10 of three. So what is the exponent on base 10 that would give you an answer of three. Well, it has to be about 0 0.477 if you use a scientific or graphing calculator because base 10 raised to the 0 0.477 exponent is about three. So in other words, negative one third times log of 1 27th is about 0 0.477. So in the last example, we talked about how to evaluate logarithmic expressions using the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. Now we're gonna talk about how to expand and combine logarithmic expressions. The laws of logarithms actually allows us to write the logarithm of a product or the logarithm of a quotient or the logarithm of an exponential expression as a sum or a difference of logarithms. The process of actually writing out a logarithm as a sum or a difference of several logarithms is called expanding a logarithmic expression. So example two, we're going to expand logarithmic expressions. Use the laws of logarithms to expand each expression as a sum and difference of logarithms with all powers expressed as factors. So number one, we're gonna look at log base two of six times x. So what property can be used here? You have six times x as the argument of this logarithm function. Well, you have a product on the inside. So the argument is a product of two different factors. The factors are six and x. So you can rewrite this using the product law for logarithms. This would be log base two, keep the base on the logarithm the same. So it'd be log base two of one of the factors, six plus, it's a plus because it's the product law, log base two of the other factor, which is x. So this can be expanded as log base two of six plus log base two of x. And since we don't know what the value of x is, this is as far as we can simplify the expression. Log base two of six will be a number after you evaluate this using a scientific or graphing calculator. And log base two of x, we can't evaluate this because we don't know the value of x. And so we took one logarithm expression and rewrote it into a sum of logarithms. This is what's called expanding a logarithmic expression. Number two, let's look at log base five of x cubed times y to the sixth. So again, notice that the argument is a product of two different factors. You have one factor that's x cubed and the other factor is y to the sixth exponent. So you can rewrite this using the product law for logarithms first. So you have log base five of x cubed y to the sixth, that is equal to log base five of one of the factors, x cubed, plus, because we're using the product law for logarithms, log base five of the other factor, which is y to the sixth. Well, we're not finished with expanding this logarithmic expression. Notice now you have a power that's inside the argument of the logarithm with x cubed and also with y to the sixth. It's not just x, you actually have x to a power. And it's not just y, you have y to a power. So you have an exponential expression inside the argument of each logarithm. You can rewrite this using the power law for logarithms. Any exponent can be taken down to the front of the logarithm and becomes a coefficient. So three can be taken down to the coefficient for this first logarithm, and six, the exponent on the y, can be taken down to be a coefficient of the second logarithm. So you can rewrite this as three times log base five of x is still inside the logarithm, so that's still part of the argument, plus six, times log base five of, again, y is still part of the argument of that logarithm. So it'd be three times log base five of x plus six times log base five of y. And that's as far as you can simplify now because we don't know what x and we don't know what the value of y is. So three times log base five of x plus six times log base five of y, this is the expanded form for the original logarithm expression. Number three, 
This time it has natural log of the quantity a times b squared in the numerator of a fraction divided by the cube root of c in the denominator of the fraction. So again, notice this time you have a fraction inside the logarithm that makes up the argument. Well, the argument is a quotient of a numerator and denominator, so we need to use the quotient law this time for logarithms to simplify the logarithmic expression and expand it. So we have natural log this time, so it would be log base e of the numerator, so natural log of a times b squared subtract because we're using the quotient law for logarithms because we have a fraction as part of the argument of the logarithm. So subtract natural log of the cube root of c that makes up the argument of the second logarithm because it's the denominator of the original logarithm. And so that's the quotient law. But now notice in this first logarithm, it's natural log of a times b squared. So the argument is a product of two different factors. You have one factor is a, the other factor is b squared. So you can rewrite this first logarithm into a sum of logarithms using the product law for logarithms again. So you have natural log of a, that's one of the factors, plus natural log of b squared, that's the other factor, subtract natural log of the cube root of c. Well, the cube root of c is c to the one-third exponent after you rewrite this as an exponential expression. And now notice that you have a exponent on b as part of the argument in the second logarithm, and you also have one-third as an exponent on the c, base c, in the third logarithm. So now you can use the power law for logarithms to bring the exponent to the front of each individual logarithm. So natural log of a, that's already simplified completely, but the second logarithm becomes two times natural log of b, and then subtract, then the third logarithm becomes one-third times natural log of c. And again, since we don't know what the values of a, b, or c are, this is as simplified as we can get. We've taken the original logarithm, natural log of a, b squared, divided by the cube root of c, and we rewrote it into a sum and a difference of logarithms using the product rule and also the quotient rule for logarithms. And we also wrote any powers that we saw as factors. In other words, as coefficients for each individual logarithm. Now let's try number four. This time we have log base three of the quantity, two times x times the square root of x squared plus 1, that's all in the numerator, and the denominator is x plus 3. So again, notice you have a lot going on with this argument of the logarithm, but it's overall a fraction. Notice that the argument is a quotient of a numerator and denominator, so you can use a quotient law for logarithms first. Log base 3 of the numerator, so 2x times the square root of x squared plus 1, and then use subtraction because we're using the quotient law for logarithms. It's subtract log base 3 of the denominator, x plus 3. So now this first logarithm is not finished. You have log base three of a product of several factors. One of the factors is two, another factor is x, and the last factor would be the square root of x squared plus one. So you need to rewrite this as a sum of different logarithms with base three. You can rewrite this as log base three of two x plus log base three of the other factor, square root of x squared plus one. And then notice that this last logarithm, there is no property that can be used. It's a sum on the inside of the logarithm. It's a sum as part of the argument. We can only use the product rule for products. We can only use the quotient rule for quotients. And we can only use the power law when we have powers. We can't do anything when there's a sum as part of the argument. So this is completely simplified. Log base 3 of x plus 3, there's nothing else we can do with it in terms of laws of logarithms. However, now that we have log base 3 of 2x, that is 2 times x. So you can rewrite this as a sum of logarithms using the power law. It would be log base 3 of 2 plus log base 3 of x. And we know from our earlier work that anytime we have radicals involved, we can rewrite them as fractional exponents or rational exponents. So the square root of x squared plus 1, you can rewrite this as x squared plus 1 all to the 1 half because it was a square root of x squared plus 1. And then the last logarithm stays the same, minus log base 3 of x plus 3. So now the last step. Notice that 2 is not a product, it's not a quotient, and it's not a power. So that one's completely finished. Log base 3 of x, that one's completely finished because we don't know what the value of x is. However, we have x squared plus 1 that's being raised to the 1 half power as the argument of this third logarithm with base 3. So we can now use the power law for logarithms to take the 1 half, the exponent, and make it a coefficient for that individual logarithm. So we'll have simplified this. Log base 3 of 2, that stays the same, plus log base 3 of x, that stays the same, plus 1 half after you bring the exponent down to make it a coefficient, 1 half times log base 3 of x squared plus 1, and then the last logarithm is minus log base 3 of x plus 3. Notice that these last two logarithms you have no other rule that can be used. x squared plus 1, that's not a product, and that's not a quotient. So you cannot rewrite this as a sum or a difference of logarithms. Same thing with the last logarithm. And it's not just x squared, it's an x squared plus 1 in this third logarithm. 
So you still can't even use the power law because it's not just an exponential expression. You have an exponential expression that also is being added to one. So this is completely simplified. Log base three of two plus log base three of x plus one half log base three of x squared plus one subtract log base three of x plus three. This is the simplified form or the expanded form for this original logarithmic function, log base three of the quantity two x times square root of x squared plus one all divided by x plus 3 using the laws of logarithms. So the laws of logarithms also allows us to reverse the process of expanding that we talked about in the previous example. In other words, we can actually write sums and differences of logarithms as a single logarithm using the process of combining logarithmic expressions. So example three, we're going to combine logarithmic expressions into a single logarithm. Use the laws of logarithms to combine each expression into a single logarithm using the product law, the quotient law, and the power law for logarithms. So number one, you have three times log of x, so that's, so that's a base 10 logarithmic expression, plus one half log base 10 of x plus one. So the first thing we're gonna do is rewrite any coefficients as exponential expressions in the argument. So remember, the last step that we usually did on the last example was that we used the power law to bring any exponents down to coefficients. Well, we need to use the power law first to bring any coefficients and make them exponential expressions as part of the argument. So three will be an exponent on the base x, and one half will be the exponent on the base x plus one. So this makes it log base 10 of x cubed plus log base 10 of x plus one all to the one half. And now notice that you have two logarithms with the same base and you are adding the two logarithms together. Well, that's the product law for logarithms. If you have a sum of two different logarithms with the same base, you can actually rewrite this as a single logarithm where each of the arguments are multiplied together as factors. So you have log base 10 of one of the arguments, x cubed, times the other argument of the logarithm, x plus one all to the one half power. So it would be log base 10 of x cubed times the quantity x plus one to the one half power. And then we can rewrite any fractional exponents or rational exponents as radicals. So we know that x plus one to the one half is really a square root of x plus one. So you can rewrite this as log base 10 of x cubed times inside the square root would be x plus one. And so now we've taken two logarithms and combined them into a single logarithm. Number two, we have two times natural log of t plus one third times natural log of t subtract one and then subtract four times natural log of t plus one. Let's take these three logarithms and combine them into a single logarithm because we have three logarithms all with the same base. These are natural logarithms. So this is log base e for each of these logarithmic expressions. So first thing to do is use the power law because you have a coefficient two in front of this first logarithm, a coefficient of one third in front of the second logarithm, and you have a four in front of the natural log of t plus one. So you can rewrite two as an exponent on base t, one third as the exponent on the base t subtract one, and four as an exponent on the base t plus one. So this makes it natural log of t squared plus natural log of t subtract one, all to the one third power, and then subtract, keep the subtraction between the logarithms, and then natural log of t plus one raised to the fourth exponent. So now, whenever you read addition and subtraction, you always go from left to right. So we see the first two logarithms are being added together. We can use the product law first because they have the same base for the logarithmic expressions. And you can actually multiply the arguments of the logarithms. So make this one logarithm, natural log or log base e, of one of the factors, t squared, times the other argument of the other logarithm, t subtract one all to the one third. And then let's just keep the last logarithm the same, minus natural log of t plus one all to the fourth. And now notice you have a logarithm of one expression, subtract natural log of another expression. They have two logarithms with the same base and you are subtracting them, or is a difference of logarithms with the same base. So that means you actually have a fraction of two different arguments. You have the natural log is one common logarithm, between the two different logarithms, so natural log of a fraction. The numerator is the argument of the natural log that comes before the subtraction sign, so it will be natural log of t squared times t subtract one in parentheses to the one third power is the numerator of the argument, and then it's divided by the argument of the natural log that follows the subtraction sign. So the denominator would be t plus one all to the fourth. So this becomes natural log, one single logarithm, t squared times t minus one to the one third power and then t plus one to the fourth, that's in the denominator. And then again, if you have one third exponent, you can rewrite this as a radical. You have natural log of t squared, and then t subtract one to the one third becomes a cube root, where t subtract one goes on the inside of the cube root, that's the numerator, and then the denominator stays the same as t plus one all to the fourth. 
So this is a single logarithm that was representing this original sum and difference of three different logarithms with the same base. So one important point about the laws of logarithms. The laws of logarithms actually tell us how to compute a logarithm of a product or a quotient. However, there is no corresponding rule for a logarithm of a sum or a logarithm of a difference. In other words, log base A of the quantity x plus y, it is not equal to log base A of x plus log base A of y. The right side of this expression actually tells us to use the product rule. The product rule is you actually multiply the arguments where you have logarithms with the same base. So this would be log base A of x times y. It's not x plus y is the argument. It should be x times y. That's the correct form. If you have log base A of a sum, that cannot be simplified. It's not a product, it's not a quotient, and it's not an exponential expression. In addition, laws of logarithms do not tell us that we can simplify quotients or powers of logarithms either. The laws of logarithms are only for products that are inside the argument, quotients that are inside the argument, and powers that are within the argument of the logarithmic function. So if you have log of 6 divided by log of 2, that is not log of 6 divided by 2. Because if you have a fraction inside a logarithm, we know that's a quotient rule for logarithms. You can rewrite this as a difference of logarithms. So this should be log of 6 divided by 2 should be log of 6 subtract log of 2. Log of the numerator subtract log of the denominator with the same base. So it's log base 10 in this case. This is the correct form. It should be log of 6 subtract log of 2, not log of 6 divided by log of 2. There is no logarithm rule for a quotient of logarithms. The rule, the quotient rule, is a quotient inside the argument. The 6 and the 2 are not part of a single logarithm. And then the last one, you have log base 2 of x and the whole expression is being cubed. Well, notice this. You have 3 that's on the entire logarithm. That 3 is not on the x. So it's not really an exponential expression. It's a logarithm expression that's being raised to the third power. So this is log base 2 of x times log base 2 of x times log base 2 of x. It's not log base 2 of x cubed. So if you have 3 times log base 2 of x, it should be written this way. Log base 2 of the 3, the coefficient, can be rewritten as an exponential expression, but it's on the base x. So it's x cubed as the argument of the logarithmic expression, not cubed on the entire logarithm. So this is the correct form. And the left side, there is no rule for this. It's not the power rule for logarithms. So let's finish up this video by talking about one more formula that we can actually use to simplify or evaluate logarithmic expressions, which is called the change of base formula. For some purposes, we can find it useful to change a logarithmic expression from one base to a logarithmic expression of another base, typically so that we can actually use a scientific or graphing calculator so that we actually can evaluate logarithms. So the theorem says this, change a base formula, let a and b, these are the bases of logarithms, be a positive number where the base a cannot be 1 and the base b cannot be 1. In addition, let any real number x be greater than 0. That way you actually can evaluate the logarithm because the argument will involve x. So here's the formula. Log base b of x, so this logarithm has base b. You can rewrite this logarithm from base b to a different logarithm with a different base. And this is called the change of base formula. It's log base a, so a is the new base of the logarithmic expression. So it's log base a of x, so the argument stays the same for this new logarithm, base a, but that's the numerator of the fraction. However, the denominator of the fraction is log base a, so again, the base a is the new base for the logarithmic expression, and then the argument is b. b was the base of the old logarithm. So this is what's called a change of base formula from base b logarithm to a base a logarithm. You have log base A of the argument in the numerator and log base A of the old base B in the denominator. So there's a reason for changing the base of a logarithmic expression. Due to the fact that scientific and graphing calculators only have the common logarithm, which is a base 10 logarithm, and the natural logarithm, which is a base E logarithm, we actually have to change if we want to evaluate a logarithmic expression that is not base 10 or base E. If we want to evaluate it using a graphing or scientific calculator, we need to change the base from whatever the base was to either base 10 or a base e logarithm so we can use the calculator. So here's how we can do that. If you want to use the common logarithm, you use the change of base formula to change this from base b, whatever that number b is, to now base 10 logarithm. So log base b of x, the right hand side will be log base 10. We're changing the base to base 10 now. So log base 10 
of the argument x divided by log base 10, so same base, log base 10, of the old base, which was b. So if you evaluate this using the calculator, now you can actually do log base 10 of x divided by log base 10 of b, the common logarithm of x divided by the common logarithm of b, to evaluate this old expression involving base b, which was not part of a scientific or graphing calculator. Or you can actually change this also to log base e using the natural logarithm. So if I want to change this from base b logarithm to a base e logarithm, I'm going to use the natural logarithm. So it would be natural log of the argument in the numerator, so natural log of x in the numerator of the fraction, and the denominator becomes natural log or log base e of the old base, which in this case was b. So let's see how we can actually use the change of base formula so we can evaluate logarithms that are not base 10 or base e using a scientific or graphing calculator. So example four, use the change of base formula. Use the change of base formula to calculate the following logarithmic expressions. Round your answers to three decimal places. So number one, we're going to evaluate what is log base three of 100? Well, notice that the original logarithm has base three. So if I wanna change from base three to either base 10 or base e, so that actually I can use the scientific or graphing calculator, I can either change to base 10 and use the common logarithm. So this way, use the change of base formula. So it'll be log base 10 of the argument. So that stays in the numerator. So log base 10 of 100, and then divide by log base 10 of the old base which was three. So if you want to evaluate log base three of 100, you would do log of 100 divided by log of three, which was the old base. And this will come out to be about 4.1918. Log of 100, what is the power of 10? That will give you 100 because the base is 10. Well, the exponent must be two on base 10. So you can actually can simplify the numerator and get two. The denominator, you can't actually simplify. So it just stays log of three. Well, if you do 2 divided by log 3, or if you do the original logarithm of 100 divided by log of 3, you'll get about 4.1918, or if you round to three decimal places, it'd be 4.192. Now, on the other hand, let's say you want to use the natural logarithm to evaluate this logarithm base 3 of 100. Well, you can change this to log base e as well. So you can do the change of base formula, so it'd be natural log of the argument, so natural log of 100 in the numerator, divided by natural log of the old base, which was 3. Let's try this out too. You have natural log of 100, and then you close the parentheses, and then divide by natural log of 3. You also get the same answer. It's still 4.1918 when you round to four decimal places. So if you round to three decimal places, it'll be 4.192. Exactly the same answer that we had if we changed to base 10 or if we changed to base e. And again, the reason why we want to change to base 10 or base e logarithm is because those two are actually built into any scientific or graphing calculator. All right, let's try number two. This time we're gonna find out what is log base nine of 20. In other words, what is the exponent on the base nine that would give you 20? So the answer is gonna be somewhere between one and two because nine to the first power is nine, but nine squared is 81, and 20 is somewhere between nine and 81. So let's find out what this is approximately equal to what is the power on base nine that will give you 20 using a scientific calculator using the change of base formula. So if we wanna change this to base 10, we would use log of 20, so log of the argument, divided by log of the old base, which was nine. So you have log of 20 divided by log of nine. That will be approximately 1.3634, or if you round to three decimal places, it'd be 1.363. Let's say you wanna use the natural logarithm instead to change the base to base e. You can do natural log of 20, close the parentheses, and then divide by natural log of nine, and you'll find out that it's the same answer. It's about 1.3634, or if you round to three decimal places, it'd be 1.363. So one more, number three, let's find out what's the value of log base pi of e. So in other words, what is the exponent on pi, base pi, that would give you the number e? So let's find out. If we change this to log base 10 logarithm, we would use the change of base formula this way. It'd be log base 10 of the argument e divided by log base 10 of the old base pi. So log of e, close the parentheses, divided by log base 10 of pi, that is approximately 0.8736 or if you round to three decimal places, about 0 0.874. However, let's say you wanna change this from base pi to base e logarithm, then you would use the natural logarithm. So you have natural log of the argument, which was e, so natural log of e, we actually know this value, it's one, and then it's divided by natural log of the old base, which was pi. So you can do natural log of e, close parentheses, and then divide by natural log of pi, and again, it's, you'll notice it's the same answer. It's about 0 0.8736, or three decimal places, approximately a 0 0.874. So it doesn't matter which type of logarithm you use. You can either use log base 10 or log base e 
Either way, if you use the change of base formula, you'll find out the value of what is the exponent on base pi that will give you e. And it looks like it's about 0.874 if you round to three decimal places. Pi to this exponent will give you the number e. So this finishes our video on laws of logarithms. We talked about the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule for logarithms. We talked about how to expand logarithmic expressions using the laws of logarithms. We also talked about how to condense or combine logarithmic expressions into a single logarithm using the laws of logarithms. And we also use the change of base formula to evaluate logarithms. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about solving exponential equations.